In the last few years, the Islamic State has declared a series of provinces in South Asia, including the infamous province of Khorasan near Afghan-Pakistan border, and as a result, its threat is growing exponentially in India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Islamic State's Khorasan province in South Asia is gaining strength as it is well organized and supported by intelligence agencies such as the ISI. An Amsterdam-based think tank recently held a virtual seminar over the threat caused by the rising influence of ISIS in South Asia. A report. After the fall of the Caliphate in Syria and Iraq, the Islamic State is fast spreading its network in South Asia the region which already has a large number of terrorist and extremist groups. ISIS sympathizers, some of them former Taliban commanders, have begun active recruitment drives to widen the presence of the group in the region. To discuss the emerging threat of the Islamic states into South Asia, Amsterdam-based think tank European Foundation for South Asian Studies or EFSAS hosted a webinar titled Rise of ISIS in South Asia on the sidelines of the 45th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. A panel of scholars, policy analysts and researchers in the field of terrorism and South Asian politics deliberated upon the origins of the Islamic State of Khorasan province, its main areas of operation and assessed its number of fighters mostly belonging to Pakistani origin. So the ISKP have been very active in Nangarhar, subduing large areas, including whole districts up to a period. The force also attempted to project itself further, attempting to establish a presence in places like Helmand and Kandahar in the south, Ghazni in the southeast, and even the north, up into Balk and Fari up in the, in the northwest. They've had a lot less success in this. ISKP have also targeted Shia Muslims and the city of Kabul. Mass casualty attacks. Uh, are a major feature of ISKP's military operations, and ISKP would love to trigger sectarian violence. Eastern Afghanistan allows them the potential to do this, offering valuable resources and opportunities for all insurgent groups. It borders the safe havens in Pakistan. The Spingar mountain range that forms the southern boundary between Nangarhar province and Pakistan is a tough geographical barrier, difficult for US, Afghan or Pakistani militaries to penetrate. The Khyber Pass area offers a good smuggling hub for arms, fighters and narcotics. The Islamic State of Khorasan province has been accused of carrying out attacks on behalf of the Haqqani network and the Lashkar-e-Taiba in Afghanistan and India. Various reports suggest that Pakistani deep state is pushing the Haqqani network to increase its state in ISKP to retain its leverage on Afghanistan. Researchers in the EFSAS webinar drew similarities between the modus operandi of ISIS in Pakistan and the Haqqani network, arguing that oftentimes the two groups acquired weapons and ammunition from similar sources, which implies that the ISI keeps ISIS as an open option to be utilized for strategic depth in the future. The problem is, if you talk to the security officers of Afghanistan, uh, they will all point to the hallmarks of attacks of the ISIS uh, and say they're extremely similar to the attacks conducted by the Haqqani network. So they say ISIS is a totally different face now. Uh, when Taliban or the Pakistani ISI would like to conduct an attack, just blaming it on ISIS, simply they, they basically say, OK, we are not supporting this, uh, but actually they are doing it. We haven't seen any evidence, but again, the insurgency landscape is so fluid. Uh, material, people, uh, even resources are shared widely and extensively. But the whole discussion in Afghanistan is that the ground for all this has been uh, made by the Pakistani ISI and they're keeping ISIS as an option. So an open option when, in case somebody else like the Taliban um, they kind of free themselves from their circle of influence. Over the years, Pakistan has gained the reputation of being a terror breeder and perpetrator and is now counted among the dreaded few for spreading mayhem across South Asia and the globe. It not only provides resources and funds for terror proliferation, 
but also a political patronage to allow them to unleash their devious strategies in their own style.